This is a 14-year-old girl with biopsy-proven GCT in the T5 vertebral body. The PET scan was negative for metastasis. Three months of preoperative denosumab treatment had resulted in regression of the epidural component of the tumor and also the tumor had reasonably ossified. Preoperative embolization of segmentals was attempted but could not be performed successfully without compromising the vascularity of the spinal cord. Just for orientation, on the right side of the screen is the head end and right in the middle is the T5 which contains the tumour. A laminectomy of T5 is performed using an ultrasonic bone scalpel. A part of T4 and T6 lamina is also removed with it. T4-5 and T5-6 bilateral complete facetectomy is planned. After removing the transverse process of T5 and T6, a complete facetectomy of T5-6 is being performed. Once that is removed completely, the pedicle of T5 is palpated and removed piecemeal. Now the T5 nerve root is doubly ligated and divided. Similar steps are carried out on the left side. Then the T5 and T6 rib on the left side are being removed. The rib is cut about 3 to 4 cm laterally and dissected free of the pleura and removed entirely along with the rib head. Similarly, the T6 rib is removed. Now the neurovascular bundle running beneath the T5 rib is isolated and divided as shown in the diagram. This allows for blunt dissection along the lateral wall of the vertebral body and care is taken not to injure the segmented vessels at this stage. A temporary stabilizing rod is placed on the left side. Because of the close approximation of the tumor with the right T5 rib head, that rib head is left behind next to the tumor. And similar steps to remove the T5 and T6 rib on the right side are done. Blunt dissection along the lateral wall of the vertebral body is performed with a ribbon gauze. Similarly, a plane is developed on the left side as well. Now, finger dissection is done bilaterally and the aim is to get around the spine such that the fingertips touch each other. This gets the great vessels and viscera away from the spine. This is a key step in this procedure and inability to successfully get around the tumor makes it very difficult to remove it en bloc. Using a right angle mixture, a long ribbon gauze is placed between the spine and the important anterior structures. As seen, uh, several of these can be passed uh, uh, around the spine. Now using a spinal needle, uh, we determine the level of the osteotomy on fluoroscopy. Our plan was not to get into the disc but drive the cut through normal vertebral bodies above and below. Using a bone scalpel, these initial cuts are made. These cuts are now extended using osteotomes. The direction and the depth is checked repeatedly on C-arm. Here we are making the inferior cut through the upper part of the T6 vertebral body, taking care not to go through and through at this stage. Similarly, this is the upper cut through the lower part of the T4 vertebral body. Notice that there are malleable retractors placed around the spine to protect the anterior structures in case inadvertently the osteotomes slip out. Slowly alternating between left and right side, most of the vertebral body can be cut. Now to break the most anterior part of the vertebral body, a finger is placed on the opposite side and the osteotome is driven in until it touches the finger. This confirms that the cut has been completed through and through. A similar maneuver is being done at the upper level. Now you can see that the vertebral body has become reasonably mobile. Now a slight distraction is applied across the screws. This helps the extraction of the tumor laden vertebral body. Here you can see that there are some adhesions between the dura and the PLL. 
these are carefully dissected and separated and we are making sure that the dura is free from all adhesions now the ALL anteriorly is sharply divided with a 15 number knife over the malleable retractor only after this the vertebral body can be swung out from the right side when the vertebral body is reasonably free from all attachment it is grabbed with a towel clip and gradually rotated around the spinal cord such that it is delivered out from the right side this one has to do very carefully without touching the spinal cord fingers are used to guide the vertebral body out slowly once it is out any residual attachments can be sharply divided and the tumor is removed this is the photograph of the specimen removed end block and it has been sent for histopathology for examination of the margins and this is the x-ray of the specimen showing complete end block resection now at this stage there was a neuromonitoring alert with loss of MEP amplitudes in the legs the distraction across the screws was released and the blood pressure was raised as we were preparing for the wake-up test the MEP signals returned back and hence the wake-up test was cancelled and we proceeded with the surgery here we are checking if there is any compression on the dural sac during this maneuvering now a mesh cage filled with autologous bone graft is placed in the defect and its position is confirmed on the C arm then compression is applied across the screws to lock the cage in the posterior column is reconstructed using the harvested ribs such that the continuity of the posterior elements is restored posterior elements are then decorticated from T3 to T8 longitudinally rib grafts are prepared and placed across the defect crosslink connector is applied across the screws and rest of the harvested bone graft is placed over the decorticated posterior elements this is how the post-operative x-rays look two year follow-up scans show complete fusion without any local recurrence this is a recent paper it's a multi-center study of 82 patients with spinal GCTs and it showed that with end block resection there is a 8% chance of local recurrence whereas with intralesional it is 44% percent 